It's Money Monday. We're getting into more earnings. Let's look at Dangote Cement's 2023 full year earnings. Uh, 2.2 trillion naira, 36% year on year growth, top line revenue, cost of sales rising by 54%. We're going to dive into that. Gross profit, 1.3 trillion, 26. But then there it is making headlines, the FX loss. But unlike other companies, Dangote Cement was still able to pull in a profit. 20% year-on-year higher uh, after tax, $455 billion. Let's dive in. Uh, we have another uh, top analyst with us. It's back-to-back -back analyst today. And he also has a three-syllable name like Arnold Dublin Green. This is James Ola Adisa. He's an industrial analyst with Chapel Hill Denim. And he's joining us to discuss this. James, you're very welcome. Good morning Thank to you. Thank you so much for having me. Fantastic. All right, let, let's start at the top level for Dangote Cement. And we always love, this is my favorite part about, about earnings, is drilling down the, um, what do you make of the top line growth? Um, and then I guess we'll get into Nigeria and Pan-Africa as we disaggregate it. But what, what did you make of how they performed in 2023, revenue-wise? Okay, so um, look at the two drivers, volume, prices, right? Um, we see that it was primarily driven by prices, right? We saw that on average, realized prices went up by about 38%. This is aggregated revenue for yeah. the group. Yeah. And we saw that volumes were down by about 1.8%. And that's translated to about a 36% increase in revenue. Yeah. So, I mean, it wasn't uninspiring, right? It was a positive result, and we like that. Yeah, yeah. And just, you know, going to the next question. Yeah, okay, yes, on, because um, I thought this was very interesting. Uh, if we, let's actually pull up the revenue from Nigeria, looking at domestic and export. I think we'll start with Nigeria first. In terms of the, I mean, the bulk of the amount that was made, there it is. So here's Nigeria's revenue, 7.3% uh, growth, 1.2 trillion, exports 38 billion. So yeah, can you talk, talk to us about this as far as, and in the contribution to group revenue, 58%. Uh, well, yeah, what, what do you make of this particular, so as far as Nigeria as a segment is concerned? Okay, so um, geographically, they have the Nigerian segment, which is really, for, you know, a cash cow for the business, yeah. right? It does most of the revenues. And we saw that this segment of the business was driven primarily by prices. Yeah. Right. Volumes were down and, you know, prices were up by about 17 percent, you know, and that translated to an increase in revenue. And, you know, it's expected that the volumes would somewhat dwindle. If you look at the 2023 as a whole, you would see that you know, consumers' purchasing power was really eroded and as a result, demand collapsed. And so seeing the drop in, you know, volumes is expected. And what the company was able to do was to use prices, you know, to sort of augment that shortfall from volumes in order to see positive growth in revenue. Great breakdown. Thank you, sir. All right, let's get to the pan-African side because I'm always, you know, fascinated by how Dangote Cement is trying to uh, scale across um, the, the continent. So. Pan-African side making up 41% of uh, percentage of the group total group revenue. Um, not quite the huge numbers, as you've mentioned. Nigeria is a cash cow. So can you talk to us about how they're able to manage things on the, on the Pan-African level? So, you know, the, the Pan-African business, the results, they were nothing short of impressive. Yeah. Right. We saw, you know, average realized prices go up by over 100%. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, that shouldn't mislead people because it looks as though prices doubled. Well, that's not really the case. So transaction, you know, prices are different from reporting prices, right? So, you know, when you're converting it using a cross currency with the dollar, you know, there is that um, exchange rate difference, you know, and that's what actually translated to the over 100% increase in average realized prices. But even with that, you know, we saw volumes do good numbers and the contribution of both you know, translated to a significant increase in revenue. And I must mention that, you know, if you look at the Pan-African business, its contribution to the overall group, like you rightly said, is about 41%. But look at it last year. You know, it wasn't, it wasn't that big. So it wasn't big that, 2022, 2022, I mean. right, right. Yeah, it wasn't right. that big. It yeah. was around 24%. Yeah. You know, so we've seen that increase to about 41%. And that just means that, you know, the company has come to a point where they have that oh, wow moment you know, that oh, this can actually be lucrative for us. Yeah. And so they are, I, I believe that they're going to you know, put a lot more focus on the Pan-African segment yeah. to try and get the most value out of it. Do you think, um, hopefully we'll, maybe we'll get, we'll get uh, the chief financial officer again in, in here. Um, we had him last, last year. Do you think um, Dangote will want more exports as opposed to, I'm just, I'm just spitballing here, okay. asking a random question, but do you think they would prefer to boost their exports more as opposed to 
drawing revenue from the domestic side, or did they want the best of both worlds? Uh, so I would say they would want the best of both worlds. And so you would have to look at it this way. Yeah. So domestic sales accounts for a significant portion. If I'm not mistaken, exports is about 5% of the total you know, revenue bucket for yeah. the group. Yeah. And so um, you know, if they are going to boost the domestic um, sales, you know, it would definitely make a lot of impact for the group's revenue. But you would also see that they've been making some strategic moves yeah. to boost their export sales. So they have two ports, both of which have about 2 million tons capacity. You know, they also have a new plant that they are building in Ogun State, Itori to be specific, yeah. you know, about 6 million tons, if I'm not mistaken. And you know, that is geared towards exports. So it means that in the mid to long term, the company is looking at really getting the most value from it you know, export sales. Mm. So they are trying to get the best of both worlds. You look at FX, you know, that's important. You know, so, and if you're exporting, you're going to get in FX. Yeah, and that's yeah. going to be very helpful for the company. Yeah. So I think best of both worlds is... is, is, it, is, yeah. it is. All right. Um, I'm glad you mentioned FX because if we look at the top, the earnings again, 164 billion Naira loss. These FX losses, you know, we talked, we've had with analysts here on Nestle. We've looked at, you know, MTN, Nigeria. MTN, I think the analyst call is at three o'clock today. Yeah. Um, Devaluation, yeah? Is that, is that what, what more is there to be said? Can you talk mm -hmm. about the FX loss that they, that they faced? So, I mean, 164 billion is a lot of money. Yeah, it is a lot of money. Right. <laughs> it's so, a lot. So, you look at their loan book, yeah. you see that 70% of that loan book is exposed to FX. Wow. You know, so it immediately tells you how they are able to see 164 billion in FX losses. Yeah. You know, and that added pressure to their bottom line. It was, you know, a significant amount of money. Yeah, yeah. Um, I guess this is probably tied to the net finance costs. Since you mentioned the loan book jumping by about two hundred and nine percent, was that the same similar story, or what was what's with the net finance cost there? So for the net finance cost, you know, it was first of all the fixed finance income declined. Yeah. And then, you know, we saw that average effective interest rates jumped from about eleven percent to about seventeen percent for the group. Yeah. You know, and we also saw that the group gross debt increased by about 39%. Wow. And that was driven by, you know, a commercial paper. They, they, they issued commercial papers yeah. with a face value of around 200 billion. And that drove the, you know, gross debt higher. So if you look at the higher interest rate environment, yeah. right, and you look at the growth in gross debt, you know, it becomes immediately apparent how they were able to get about 144 billion in um, finance charges. Yeah. And couple that with the 164 billion FX losses that is you get. Heavy. The finance, net finance charges are a lot. Yeah, yeah. I really want to get your take on their cost highlights, particularly power. James, this is a gargantuan number. 319, I mean, basically 400 billion naira on fuel and power. The, what, what, what's, is this a transition story? Is this high diesel? What, what's the story here? You know, so, you know, I, I think one thing we all understand about the cement industry is that it's energy intensive, yeah. right? And we've seen significant increase in energy prices over you know, the past three years, yeah. and they've re remained elevated. And so even though we've seen most of the players shift from diesel to gas and other cheaper sources of fuel, we've noticed that you know, gas is indexed to the dollar. Yeah. So even though they are paying in Naira, you know, they're going to be paying a lot more. And so when you see 40% of their operating expenses going to, you know, fuel and power, you know, um, expense, yeah. you know, that explains why, you know, that amount is such a huge um, burden. For you them. know, I was driving by an NNPCL station. We had a short report when we were asking people why they buy from there. They said it's supposed to cheaper prices. The diesel there is 1390 which yeah. tells me that for other stations, it's probably 1450 okay. well, how, how much of an impact would it be on the bottom line of Nigerian companies if we had steady power supply in this country? What, what do you think, like that 400 billion they're spending, could they have moved that somewhere else or maybe cut it in half? How, what would be the, I mean, probably an obvious question, but what would be the, the impact for, for the profit margins of companies? No, I think it would be a lot better. First yeah. of all, they'll be able to plan ahead, right? Um, and they would also not have a direct exposure to the volatility in energy prices. Yeah. You know, so that would significantly allow them to, you know, if they were to hike prices and maintain their costs, you know, they will be able to understand how to do that effectively, mm. you know, while not affecting possible demand. 
yeah. products. Yeah. yeah. Uh, let's talk about retaining talent. Uh, salaries and related staff costs fifty seven percent climbed to seventy one billion. Um, well, what do you make of that? You gotta you have to pay good money to keep your <laughs> <laughs> your best talent. Yes, yes, it's true. You yeah. do have to pay good money to, to keep them. And, you know, we've also seen that the cost of living has increased in Nigeria. Right. Right. And, you know, companies have to look out for their employees. So we would guess that, you know, they make an educated guess, you know, that they probably had some salary increases and that translated to the increase in wages and salary that yeah. we're seeing. Yeah. You know, and we also know that Dangote Cement is big on getting talent in Nigeria, which is true. You know, I have spoken to some industry experts who have told me that you know they also go to the retired pool of you know some of the or some of their peers who were you know who had employees that were trained by experts yeah. you know to be able to retain these guys and obviously to get that you must pay them you good got, money. You got to pay top exactly. top top naira in order to retain them. <laughs> exactly. Um, let's talk about the stock price. I know the exchange is already trading now as we speak, but going back to um, Friday, I think the stock closed at six sixty eight or something, yeah. but. Um, how have you, and I think it's outperformed the NGX, 114% I think yesterday. Yeah. Have, you, have you seen the performance of Dangote um, stock price? Um, so it has been, you know, in January we saw significant gains in the market yeah. driven by Dangote Cement, right? Yeah. And that can be attributed to, you know, the interest, the buying interest that we saw from a very savvy investor, Femi Otedola. Yeah. Right. She was aggressively buying it in the open market. Yeah. Right. And you know that translated to a significant rise in the stock price. At that time, you know, market was valuing the stock at around three seventy. Right. And now we're seeing it at around seven hundred. Yeah. Right. So that's a significant jump. But one thing we've noticed about the trend of you know companies that have the Otedola effect is that they typically tend to you know, they don't decline. Yeah. Right. So you look at FBNH, you look at Transcor. You know, these companies or this stock rather are still trading at you know levels that they were when he entered into the stock. Yeah. You know, so we would expect something similar to possibly play out for Dangote Cement. Interesting. Um, I have to ask you about, I guess, macro issues. Yeah. The federal government inviting cement players um, to fix the price of cement at about seven thousand naira a bag to try to stem these rising prices. I want you to try and marry that with the fundamental issues that are facing rising cost of cement. Is this thing going to work? Um, you can really tell how I feel. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like whenever, I guess, I guess whenever so. government yes. gets involved in these things, I just, oh, my yeah. my mind just, yeah, but I, you're the expert. So what, what do you think? Is, uh, can they fix the price of cement? I mean, I think, you know, they're going to engage them as stakeholders. Right. I, that word, eh? I don't know if you ban it, but hey, go ahead. <laughs> I mean, they, will, they have to engage them. Right, 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 right. And I think they will be accommodative to it. Yeah. Right. Um, so it would possibly be for the short term. Yeah. And the, because they are accommodating the government, it means that it's going to eat into their margins, specifically their profitability margins. Yeah. If we look at their EBITDA margins, what we see is that, you know, based on our estimates, if they cut cement prices by about 10%, we could see EBITDA margins fall from an average of 39% for the industry now yeah, yeah. to about 28, 29%. Wow. And if they do cut it by 20%, you yeah. know, we could see the EBITDA margins shrink to about 20%. That's, you know, that's really biting the bullet. Yeah, yeah. Right. So we, we think that it would be for the short term, right? And if they are looking long term, I mean, the, the, the cement players now, they would see that there can be some future benefits from the government if they accommodate them now. Mm. So in order to, you know, it's a trade-off they have to be, they have to think properly about. Yeah. You know, so if they accommodate them now, they could enjoy some future benefits later on. Well, we will observe. We yeah. will see how things uh, play out. I guess, okay, overall, just final question. How do you see the sector, industrial, cement, and so on, playing out for 2024? How do you... How do you... I remain positive, yeah. uh, and I'll tell you why. So um, we look at Nigeria, we see that demand dropped in 2023, you know, but we don't expect to see the shocks that translated to the, the drop in demand in 2024. And so that would mean that demand would pick up. You know, we would expect to see the private sector be more, you know, participate much more in infrastructural development, and that would possibly drive it. Um, you know, demand is what I mean. And, you know, we also see that the government is big on cap capex, capital expenditure. And if they are going to pull through with their capex plans, then you know, that would also contribute to the demand growth. And so I think the outlook is positive for the cement sector. 
Hey, uh, James, this has been a fantastic in-depth conversation. Thank you so much Thank for, you for having me. diving deep in. James Ola Adisa, uh, oh, of course, industrial analyst at Chapel Hill. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you for your time. Thank you.